Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Here, Jesus is talking about being born again. Remember this, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit is not a skill to be acquired. It's a sense to be sharpened. When you were born, you were born, if you were born perfectly healthy, you were born hearing and you were born seeing. You were born with those senses. You did not have to be taught to see. You did not have to be taught to hear. You did have to be taught to pay attention, to listen closely, to observe. You had to be taught to make use of those senses, but you couldn't be taught how to have those senses. You were just born with them. In the same way, you are born again of the spirit. That's the new life now. You are born again of the Spirit with the ability to hear the Holy Spirit. You were born again with the ability to see in the Spirit. Well, that's just the truth of the matter. When you were born of the Spirit, all of the spiritual senses came with it. So I'm not here to teach you how to gain spiritual hearing. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you belong to him, you can hear the Holy Spirit. So rather what I want to help you to do is to discern what you are hearing. Now, it's at this point that I have to make sure that you understand I'm not going to be giving you detailed descriptions based upon personal experience. Now, if you have personal experiences with hearing the voice of God, like, for example, I heard the audible voice of God when I was seven years old, and he spoke very firmly. There was a masculine tone to his voice. Uh, there was a... There was a um, a peace-giving attribute to his voice, and that's the way I describe it. But the problem is, if I'm just describing to you from my personal experience, then you might go superimposing my experience on your own thoughts and therefore just be just as confused. For example, uh, sometimes people will say, well, the voice of God sounds like many waters. Well, that's biblical. But that doesn't mean that if there's a voice in your head that sounds like many waters, that it's always God. In fact, you using your own thoughts can possibly produce that effect on the voice. And you also see in Scripture that the voice of God is still and small. But this doesn't mean that God doesn't ever speak firmly to us. Sometimes when he corrects us and rebukes us, it doesn't sound so still and small. It sounds big and booming and sometimes a little bit intimidating. So rather than give you very specific, what I want to call natural descriptions, I want to show you from Scripture biblical principles that will help you to discern the voice for yourself. Like, for example, if you're a regular listener to this ministry, then you recognize my voice, even if you hear it in just audio form. You don't have to see me on the screen. We're together often enough to where you go, oh, that's David. Okay, so you know my voice. Think about the voice of your spouse or the voice of your children. Now, if I were to ask you, what does the voice of your child sound like? Or what does the voice of your spouse sound like? Or what does the voice of your friend or your parents sound like? You would give me certain descriptions, perhaps maybe, You could describe your wife's voice as soft and monotone, or perhaps you can describe your husband's voice as strong and masculine. Maybe you can describe your child's voice as small and, you know, adorable, however you want to put it. But even if you give me those descriptions, I wouldn't be able to pick their voice out of a crowd of people talking. I wouldn't be able to listen just based upon your descriptions alone and successfully identify their voice among many other voices. You could pick their voice out of a crowd, but the person that you gave those descriptions to couldn't pick their voices out of those crowds based upon your descriptions alone. So in the same way, you can't explain sight to someone born blind. You can't explain hearing to someone born deaf. You cannot explain the voice of God to someone who doesn't know him. These things are of the spirit. So again, giving you detailed natural explanations like masculine or strong or smooth and still or like many waters, these descriptions are helpful when we tell stories of our experiences with God, sure. But in terms of serving as a principled foundation around which everyone can build their understanding of the voice of God, they just don't really serve that purpose because unless they've heard his voice for themselves, 
Those descriptions alone will not do well in helping them to identify his voice. Instead, we look to scripture to give us biblical principles. So number one, God's voice is stable and consistent. Your voice is inconsistent. Why? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. In other words, there's a consistency to the way he speaks. God will never say one thing and then speak another thing to contradict that. Now I'm going to cover that again in my third point when I talk about the word of God. But for now, I just want to talk about the consistent nature of his voice. The scripture asks, is the spirit of God straightened? In other words, can you get him to change what he said? Can you get him to change his mind? Can you bend him to your will? No. So when God speaks, there's a consistency to his voice. There's a, there's a constant stability. Now, when you and I have our thoughts and emotions flowing through us, well, now we're all over the place. On some days, we're up. On other days, we're down. On some days, we're focused. Other days, we're distracted. So when it's your own voice, it's going to tell you many different things, and it will often contradict itself because your moods will contradict itself. Your moods will contradict moods, and how you feel one day will contradict how you feel another day. So God's voice will be stable and consistent. Your voice is inconsistent. I think about many who've come to me with ministry ideas, and on Monday, they say they're called to be an apostle. On Tuesday, they're called to be a prophet. On Wednesday, they're called to start an orphanage. On Thursday, they're called to start a church. On Friday, they're called to start a podcast. On Saturday, God tells them to write a book. On Sunday, God tells them, I actually don't write that book after all because I changed my mind and I was just testing you. And I think, wow, God sure does change his mind quite often, at least according to some. So when you follow after your own ways, you're double-minded. You're unstable, constantly shifting. There's no focus. There's no momentum. There's no stability. Conversely, when you follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, there's a great uh, foundation upon which you can build your spiritual life. There's a clear direction. There's a path forward that's made very plain to you. I trust not in my ability to hear the Holy Spirit. I trust in his ability to communicate to me. God can do anything. So, of course, he'll be able to clearly communicate to me, and I simply have to listen for that instruction. So that's number one. God's voice is stable and consistent. Your voice is inconsistent. Number two, God's voice guides, your voice pushes. Now, I have to give you a caveat here and explain that sometimes God does speak with urgency. Like there are some exceptions to this, and I'm giving you a generalization, a principle, which is a generalization. There are some exceptions to this. Like if you're in immediate danger, for example, I was driving my car home one time. I was coming back late from having preached. And the Holy Spirit, like a, like a shout within my spirit, stop your car. And of course, there was a stop sign, but like, in other words, stay here. That's how I interpreted that. But stop, stop. Like I heard that, those words very urgently. So I stop at the stop sign. The Holy Spirit says, stop, don't go. And I stop. And I'm thinking, okay, well, why did he tell me to stop? And this car that didn't have its headlights on ran the stop sign at a high speed. And had I not listened to that voice or the Holy Spirit not spoken to me urgently, I would have been in an accident. I don't know if I would have been killed or seriously injured or just inconvenienced, but either way, the Holy Spirit prevented me from being harmed physically. And that's an example of him speaking with a a sense of urgency. So if there's danger, he'll speak with urgency. If you're in sin, there's going to be a very weighty quality to his voice. The psalmist wrote, Your hand weighed heavily upon me, like my strength evaporated. And you know, if you're living in sin or compromising, that the Holy Spirit will make you quite miserable in your sin. So sin and conviction, obviously, he he pushes you toward repentance and then timely actions. Like if the Holy Spirit needs you to do something immediately, there'll be a sense of urgency to that. So keeping those exceptions in mind, danger, immediate danger, sin and compromise, and some timely actions that you may need to take, keeping those exceptions in mind, we apply the general principle that God's voice guides, your voice pushes. Psalm 23, 2. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Well, that's what he does. He leads. He doesn't force. He guides. He doesn't push. The devil, generally speaking, again, these are generalizations, the devil pushes. The flesh pushes. The 
Holy Spirit. <laughs>